Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is uh, from the Knights of the Round table type time, and it's called uh, Crusaders Thy Will Be Done. It's by TMG, it takes uh, maybe 90 minutes to play, and it's for two to four players ages 14 and up. In the game Crusaders Thy Will Be Done, you're basically going to be playing as a singular faction uh, that is trying to take control of the uh, continent of uh, Europe, I'm guessing? In which case, you're going to be moving around knights, trying to uh, settle on different locations, place churches and cathedrals and houses and villages and all that good stuff on the land. As you place things, you're going to score more points. The game is kind of area control meets a little bit of a Moncala type action management system. Really interesting, unique little stuff. You're also going to get to select a different random knight in the game at the very beginning, along with um, some other interesting little aspects of the game that I think it's best to just show you. But uh, that's a basic basic idea, collect as much victory points as possible while basically conquering as much of Europe as you can along with everybody else trying to do the same thing. If you have the most points in the game, you're the winner. Alright, let's go show you the game. So here we have everything set up for a two player game in Crusaders Thy Will Be Done. We'll be using teal and green to play this game, but on the other side of this board is a three and four player module that you can bring in purple and of course orange. They all have the same components though. Uh, the, the only difference that you're going to be noticing in the characters is Specifically, the characters at the beginning of the game are going to be selecting two of these knights and picking one of them. And uh, you're going to be flipping them over. Each knight or each player is going to be able to do that, drawing two of these guys and picking the one they want to keep. Uh, it also will tell you how many wedges are going to be on this board here. So setup's pretty easy. The first thing you need to know is uh, on the board here, and it'll have these little flags where you need to place these little tokens. There's going to be leftovers, of course. And then on the board, there's going to be these little um, rectangular shapes. So you're going to need to place these also randomly. Uh, there's going to be a couple ones over here as well. There's some starting spaces and then there's the ones that are implemented on the board as guarantees that are always there. Uh, over here are the night cards which you'll be choosing uh, two, picking one. Uh, these are you're going to be gaining victory points in the, the game for defeating certain uh, factions as well as controlling uh, these certain tokens here. Uh, these are victory points or influence and the game is going to basically end when all of the influence coins in the pool are going to be removed and placed into other players' pools. Uh, when you set up the game, one player is just going to randomly set up their board based on the tiles that have only one singular action as opposed to two, and then every player is going to just simply copy that player, uh, placing them exactly in the same way uh, that their, their previous boards have looked. Somebody's going to have the exact same looking board, so it looks something like this. Uh, each of the knights is going to influence your way of play separately. Uh, this character here has 13, uh, so it's usually going to have two in each, but when it says 13, there'll be some specific thing that uh, will allow you to have an extra one. When distributing action tokens, you may begin with the original wedge, and oh, that's pretty good. And then over here is the same thing, but this one here is uh, during setup, in addition to your first knight, place the black knight figure in your starting area. Okay, so you'll actually be using the special black knight with this character here. Um, and then of course, just fill up your board. Uh, the rest of the board over here while I'm filling it up is gonna have stuff like castles and churches and uh, town halls and little, little houses. Basically, you're gonna be utilizing that board when you move your knights onto space Spaces to purchase land and then put these buildings on them. They'll all have their own build costs. It tells you um, what they're going to each cost and whatnot. There also is going to be these muster tokens, which you can also purchase, and uh, they'll give you basically battle improvements because you're going to be also battling the pieces around the board here. So, for instance, you could battle this blue one here or this gray one, and the first time you battle it, it'll be at three strength, and then it'll be at four for the next time, and so on and so forth. And you're basically trying to gather as many of these as you possibly can during the game, as well as, of course, the orange one here. And then the other option for gaining victory points, too, is uh, these little things here. They're called uh, Sar Sarakrens, the most defeated. Going to gain victory points for these here. Uh, so basically, in a reverse turn order, people are going to then place on these starting tiles. So if... Uh, if he was going to go first, then he would place first, he'd put them both there, and then he'd place his there. And then on your turn, which is pretty interesting here, is you're going to do Moncala. 
and not like five tribes necessarily, but you're going to be choosing one of the tiles here, taking all of these little tokens off of it, and then moving it around clockwise, placing one down in each. Uh, and the one you pull it off is the action you'll be taking. There's muster, which if you have enough, you can purchase your muster tokens, which will give you power. There's building, which if you have enough, you'll be able to purchase a build building and place it on your slot with your characters. Uh, and of course, it'll also unlock certain abilities and also some some of them will unlock extra knights for you. You're going to have uh, traveling, which will, if you take two off of here and move them on to over here, you'll be able to travel your knights certain spaces, one and two, or if you want to split it up, you can do one and one. Um, and then you're going to have Crusade. So for instance, this is a three in Crusade. You might have other bonuses, but uh, right now would be a great example. If you're fighting this guy here, he has three strength. If it was your turn, you would take these three, one, two, and three, and that would do three damage to this guy here. You would obtain this. And then uh, this thing would move up to four. So now the next time you have to fight it will be four. So having four here would be a good way to do it. Or of course, as you gain these musters, you're going to get a bonus to fighting and to combat, as well as there's uh, some bonuses here for that as well. Uh, influence is pretty easy. Uh, influence is the currency of the game, the victory points, uh, and when you start the game you have a certain amount based on the number of players. Players uh, in a two-player game will have less than probably a four-player game, but when that pool runs out, that is when the round's going to basically end, and players are then going to tally up all their scores. So in this case, one, two, three, and four, he would get four straight-up victory points, and there's one, two, one, five, and ten different currencies here, so... You get some influence there, pulling from the pool there. And that's the basic idea of the game. You're going to go back and forth. And you'll do the Moncala thing. I'll do one of the actions, and he'll do one of the actions, and I'll do one of the actions. Uh, and the board is going to slowly start getting ripped apart by the players as their knights move around the board, defeating certain bad guys. Or, uh, if you go to these spaces right here, actually destroying a building tile here, which can either give you A, uh, victory points, or B, the, uh, the building that is shown on here is actually the building that you would place on there. So this guy, if he beat this, he could put that there as opposed to gaining victory points. And also when you get to these specific factions over here, it'll tell you uh, this building costs two less. If you build these two buildings, it'll give you one extra victory point. Um, if you build over on that side over there, they're costing one less. So these kind of give you benefits, but they're also farther along. So as you go farther in, it's going to be more difficult and more difficult to challenge these guys here. And basically, after the end of the game happens, the player who defeated the most of uh, the Prussians here is going to get these this five. And then, of course, there's a second place as well. And then the Sacrans, whoever has sacked the most land, is going to get these. And then the Slavs, if you beat the Slavs, you're going to get these points as well. There's a couple other additional victory points whether you get to the end of these building rows here because they start costing more and more as you build more and more buildings onto the board and it also has some player reference cards that tell you uh, how they all function how many victory points you get based on the different actions you take here but anyway that's the basic idea of the game each of the knights have different abilities some of them will let you pull um instead of pulling all of them off you could leave one on and move and move the rest off which is kind of cool and others are going to give you an additional knight there's quite a different amount of crusaders that will change the way the game is played and the final thing is you can flip these over uh, as an action and basically uh, you'll be able to take that that mancala action that it just doesn't give you any benefit uh, as well as flipping one of these. And now this will actually count as two different types of actions. And of course, when there's no little tokens on these spaces, you're not going to be able to use them throughout the game. So moving these around to get them to formulate how you want your turn to go is going to work really well for you if you can do it correctly. Anyway, let's come up and talk about the game. I think you get a good idea of how to play the game. Crusaders, thy will be done. Caveats, caveats. Well, I've got just one of them here, and uh, as I explained, on an, uh, for an action on your turn as opposed to doing a Moncala action, you can choose to flip over one of your tiles, making that tile go from one action, which is like Crusade, to Crusade and Build. On the one tile, it'll show you the action as well as what it could be additionally on the other side, so that you'll know what two actions you can take part in. If you've got like four tokens on here, and you want to move them off, you could do three Crusade and one Build, or three Build and one Crusade. You can mix them up however you want, you can do two or one actions, but it's just going to be restricting you on how many tokens you have on here. It's a pretty strong move, but it basically doesn't let you have an action on your turn other than flipping this and simply taking one uh, 
one tile and all the tokens off of that and moving around the board, you just don't get to take that tile's action. So it lets you kind of manipulate the board a little bit when you choose to flip over a tile. Uh, some knights are also going to give you the ability to, to flip over tiles. And you got, like, let's talk about a couple of these guys. You can distribute action tokens either clockwise or counterclockwise. That's really great. Uh, this one here says uh, it's not re recommended for your first game, but during setup you can place one action token on each wedge. So just one, which is a total of six. Um, one travel, one muster, one build, and crusade, one influence. I don't know why you do that, but maybe there's some benefit to that. Um, oh, I guess they all count. As, they all count as plus one. That's why. Interesting. That's really interesting. Uh, holy specular. During setup, place one additional action token on each of your travel wedges. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. So they all have different unique abilities, and they change the way you're going to be playing the game and how you function the characters. The one I, I mainly have been playing with is the one where you can take all of the tokens off and move it around the board like you normally would, or you can leave one on there, which is really nice as well. Um, I like the fact they changed that. Uh, so anyway, one other thing about Crusaders that will be done. Well, in this game, it is similar to a game where you're looking for area control. You're not really fighting against each other as much as you're fighting against the board. Once you've placed things on the board, they're going to stay there forever, which is really cool. So you're competing for area and how you want to move your units around. Do you want to gather a lot of these uh, castles so that you can get a lot more knights, which would then allow you to move around the board more freely uh, so you can build in certain locations? Do you want to try and invest in flipping over your tiles first that will give you more actions throughout the game? Uh, or do you want to go forward and uh, defeat these things here? By defeating these will give you bonuses to your attack value, which will make it easier to fight m bad guys throughout the game. It's hard to decide. There's so many really like really great options. It does feel a little bit like Five Tribes as far as how the action moves around the board, uh, but then you have something unique to it, which is basically this like small world type of uh, a thing where you're going around fighting the units on the board, manipulating the space and controlling it. The game ends when the pool of value points runs out, which is interesting because there's still a lot of victory points you get at the end of the game based on bonuses and how you defeated the bad guys and who defeated the most of them. But uh, you get an idea of how close the game is throughout the entire thing, and it can be very, very close. This game is really fun. I really, really enjoyed this game. It looks great. It feels great moving the pieces around the board. I love actions that let you do that, and it gives you the choice of any of the five different actions, and there's two travel actions, uh, and also gives you additional choice to make those actions into multiple actions, which then gives you more, you know, lucrative things. Like, for me, for instance, my first game, I was trying to get as much influence as possible, so I ended up having, like, three, plus three influence, and then there's that influence space on the action space, so I had, like, five tokens, and I moved five off, and that gave me eight instant victory points and the 10 is the largest so you know that that's a good amount in a two-player game you can have 140 points so 10 points straight up is like one one fourteenth of of the game so that's that's pretty solid even even killing these guys at the best it's five points so uh that just goes to show how how, how one different strategy can make you win the game uh but of course you kind of want to go around and do as much as you can just placing those building down the buildings down and gaining the different victory points and the, and the different bonuses uh, let you progress a lot faster uh what more can I say? The components are great. The quality of artwork is excellent. Everything feels nice and thick and beautiful. I really, really like this game. I got some, this, this in Gulagong, and I like Gulagong, definitely. You can check my review for that one. But this one I like even more. This one is a little bit more lighthearted, and it has a little bit more of a unique system as to how you're moving around the board. Uh, definitely, definitely, definitely suggest checking this, this game out, Crusaders, I will be it on. I'm going to give this game my seal of approval. It's good two, three, and four players. No matter what you're playing, you're going to have a good time playing this. And there's a ton of replayability in the game, just based on the few things they gave you to make it change it up a little bit. Ah, I, I love this game. Definitely check it out if it's something you'd be interested in. The one thing I would say if you're not... what I, I try and make, think of a negative towards games every time. Uh, area control, if you don't like that kind of thing, you're not going to like this one. Uh, the actions you're just going to like. You're just going to like the way the actions flow, I feel like. I don't see a lot of reason why people, people won't because you have so much control there. <sighs> I don't know. I don't... I, I, that's it. That's all I can think of. I mean, if you guys play the game and you, you can figure out a reason why you didn't like this game that much, let me know, and that way I can kind of see see why for, for other games, but this game was just good. It was really fun. Te definitely, definitely check it out. Crusaders, I will be done. Down below in the description will be a link for you to go ahead and pick up the game if it's interesting to you. 